Today's maintenance on the Spec Corvette is oil changes. Uh, I get a lot of questions about oil changes or, or oils that I use. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and document that, although there's nothing uh, crazy complicated about doing an oil change. Also gonna go ahead and document the setup on the coolers that I have, um, because there are some tips there to run. So um, anyway, to answer the questions about what I run, um, I've been uh, coached by a, by a Corvette master mechanic that AC Delco on the filters is definitely the way to go. No need to spend a ton of money on, uh, on what is supposedly a higher end filter because these are perfectly good uh, and, and uh, per him anyway, better than most. So I didn't know when I first got into this, I was buying uh, expensive uh, high-end brand filters and, uh, and ended up just running these AC Delcos. So I pick up a few of these, so I always have one handy. Um, what I do run on the oil is a 30 weight race from Redline. It's uh, higher in zinc content, uh, specifically for race engines. And what they say is it doesn't, doesn't get you any more duration on, uh, on oil changes, but it does give you better lubricity. So, um, uh, so I run that, I've had good results. I've been running it for years, e even prior in my Mazda race cars. Uh, and then I'm also in the Redline stack on the transmission. So just Redline high temp ATF, uh, they're 7590 gear oil for the differential and and then their synthetic power steering fluid up front so uh, frequency on these there's no science here I, I think it's overkill i do the oil about every three races um, and then the transmission and diff i do twice a year and then the power steering fluid just once a season i think it's overkill um, but uh I don't know. Uh, it's it's just how I'm running. I have not sent the stuff in for oil analysis, which might be a good idea if you're trying to maximize. So that's just the uh, that's just my rule of thumb. Um, I do forget every now and then on the differential and the transmission to uh, to turn on my coolers, and so that's why my frequency is higher there. So anyway, I'll go through some of that stuff, but since that's not complicated or particularly interesting, I think. Um, I wanted to get to some things that are rather important and that's the, the coolers themselves. So I'll start back here with the transmission and differential. When I first set this car up, uh, what I was going for was speed. I wanted to just get the car set up in the easiest possible way and I wanted to follow a formula. So what I ended up putting in was the Doug Rippey Motorsports transmission and diff coolers. And it comes with all the fittings that you need to get it hooked up. Um, and the AN hoses, the braided AN hoses, as well as, I don't know if you can kind of see it back in here, the, the pump, this is my transmission side, and the coolers themselves that, that fit into the, the stock Z06 openings. And so it, that was relatively easy. The most complicated part of this setup is that you actually have to fabricate your own brackets to mount the coolers, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer. It'd be nice if they had prefab um, brackets to mount those things up, because I think it would be the same for everybody. Um, but uh, otherwise, it worked pretty well. These, these uh, differentials and transmissions, they do get really hot. The engine oil gets really hot too on these Corvettes. So it's pretty important that you run a cooler um, if you don't run a cooler, you really got to step up the, um, uh, the changing, the, the frequency of oil changes back here. So anyway, I put that, that in and in my first season of racing, I had some clutch problems. I also had some leaks from the transmission. So I ended up having to pull things out a couple of times. And so I learned the hard way that it's a little bit of a pain in the butt disconnecting the transmission. It's expensive draining it all the time because the, the fluids aren't exactly cheap. And so figured out uh, that I wanted to put in uh, dry brake fittings up here so I don't have to drain the oil every time I pull it out. So, so that's what this is. So if you ever have to, I recommend doing this. This is not part of the DRM kit. It's something that I put in after the fact. It's just a dry brake fitting. It's like a twist lock. So you squeeze it, push it together and twist it. And it's got a check valve in there so that the oil doesn't drain out. So that's the first part. The second part is as I was checking my oil from time to time just to make sure my levels were right, I was having a really hard time doing it because I found that the oil from the coolers can uh, drain back into both the differential and the transmission. So what I added to this line up here is a check valve. So this is a one-way check valve right from Summit. It's a flapper style. 
that just opens up and, uh, and allows the fluid to flow into the cooler, but not back. So this is on the line that, the, that pulls the fluid out from the differential. I've got one on the other side for the transmission as well, right? So, so I put in a check valve. And so now my process for checking fluid levels is to run the pumps uh, for a few seconds and then go ahead and shut them off. And then I can check my fluid levels and make sure that they're okay. So that's a trick I didn't know when I was getting set up. Um, not a bad idea to save yourself a little bit of time for when you do have to pull the transmission out. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain the fluids here. Um, I'll come back on and just talk about what I'm looking for as I check the fluids, but it's not rocket science, like I said. Um, I think the setup of the coolers is probably the more interesting part. I did do the same thing up here on the engine oil for what it's worth. I'm running the the uh, the track spec radiator with integrated oil cooler and uh, um, which has over here an, an oil block with a thermostat in it this kicks in at, at I believe 160 degrees and then goes ahead and pumps the oil out um, over here into the cooler you can't see it here but I also put a check valve in because I wanted to prevent the oil from draining back into the engine so that I can check oil in the pits and make sure that my levels are okay. Uh, same kind of deal, it's, the, it's a similar summit check valve, but it's a dash 10 up here and a dash eight in the back. So that's really the only difference. So those are the modifications I made to the oiling system. Otherwise, it's uh, pretty much your basic oil changes. All right, I've got my differential oil drained. And uh, basically what I was looking for is it came out, I was looking at the color of the stream uh, for the oil coming out to see what that looked like, uh, is it kind of that yellowish color like it was when it was new oil going in or is it more like a brown burnt color? I'm also looking for the smell. Um, toasted gear oil or burned gear oil has a really distinct smell. It smells really bad. Uh, it, not that regular gear oil smells lovely, but burned gear oil, you know if it's burned. Um, and so I didn't have any of that. Um, also here in the paint, what I did is I lined my um, uh, my drain pan with a, with a pan that would hold the oil so I could just get a look at it. Um, I've got basically material from the clutch packs, which is normal, um, but I'm looking for other bits of metal in here. So basically as I drain this thing out, you know, what do I have? Do I have little slivers of metal or anything like that? I can see I've got a couple, you know, right in here. Nothing too bad yet, um, but there is a little bit of chew in there. This is a this is a differential that's got about 170,000 miles on it now, uh, never been rebuilt to the best of my knowledge. So no noise is coming from the differential yet, so nothing giving me any kind of an idea that I've got, uh, that I've got major problems, but I do see a little bit of metal in here. So I'm going to continue to keep an eye on that. At this point, I don't think it's anything to worry about, but, um, if it uh, continues to get much worse, then it, uh, obviously I would be looking to rebuild it. All right, now I've got my transmission fluid out. This is uh, DEX-3 automatic transmission fluid. So again, just like with the diff, I was looking at the coloration, uh, watching it come out in the stream. It was the same thing, a nice bright red stream, looked relatively clear. So again here, uh, I'm looking for discoloration. Generally, when this burns, it's going to turn brown. It's going to smell a little bit different. Uh, and I'm also looking for metal uh, in here. Just like with the diff, it's normal to see a little bit. Uh, you just don't want to see a lot. You certainly don't want to see big chunks of metal, uh, uh, at least from a broken in transmission or differential. So this is looking pretty good. It smells just like it's supposed to, practically brand new. And while well, I see... A little bit of metal in here. I don't see anything that's that's alarming. Uh, this transmission was rebuilt. Uh, it's got about two years of racing on it. There we go. So not much in there. A little bit here and there. Let's see, I think that is, yeah, that's the pan itself. So little bits here and there, but uh, nothing bad at all. It's definitely nothing alarming and it looks just like it's supposed to. All right, now my engine oil is out. Um, kind of the same deal here, although the coloration is a little bit harder to tell because it's you know gonna generally be pretty black. Um, but you do wanna look to see if there's any water or something like that in there contaminating the oil. 
Uh, so something to keep an eye on there. Uh, and of course, look for metal bits and whatnot. Uh, this engine being as fresh as it is, I'm not expecting to see anything. And if I do, there's a decent chance it's just associated with getting the sucker broken in still. Um, so uh, this is actually the first time I've I've run synthetic oil in it. I've been breaking it in uh, with whoop, with conventional, uh, per the recommendation of, recommendation of the engine builder. And uh, anyway, everything looks to be really good here. I don't I don't see much of anything. Still looking good. Not seeing any water, although that would appear kind of down here at the bottom. Uh, and I'm not seeing anything at all in the pan. So yeah, there we go. That's it. Uh, wasn't expecting to see much. So um, I'll just go on and, and move on to filling this thing up. All right, the oil change is done. Everything's been refilled here. Uh, not much to note on the back of the diff. Uh, this is where we fill at and uh, basically just fill it up until it starts to puke oil back out uh, from the, the pump that you're using. I just use a cheap, you know, five, six dollar uh, pump that you can pick up at an auto parts store uh, and pump it straight out of the quartz. Uh, the diff took about two quarts, um, actually just a little a hair over probably because it's, uh, it's tilted up a little bit in the back. Same thing over here on the transmission. The, uh, the DRM kit comes with this T, and so basically the T goes in where the temperature sensor used to be. My return line uh, is here, which I don't need to disconnect. And so I end up filling through the temperature sensor, which is right up here. Um, and uh, not much to that either. either. You just push the hose in. Um, this is a little bit wider than the, than the hole on the, on the diff. So I basically just stick the hose inside of another piece of fuel hose to, to make it about the right size so it doesn't fall out. But again, I'm just waiting for it to puke a little oil out right there. That's about it. On the, oh, and that took about three and a half quarts, roughly. And then up here on the engine, um, again, no, no major mystery there. It took eight quarts to fill it back up. Uh, the general recommendation it, when you're uh, running a wet sump on a race car, or at least in a Corvette, is you want to run about a quart over the fill line. That eight quarts put me about a half a quart over the fill line. So I'll just start with that for now uh, and then top it off. Generally at the racetrack, I go through about a quart of oil a day. So it's going to get paid attention to quite a bit when I go back out there. Uh, I did not end up doing the power steering fluid yet. I will come back around to that, uh, but I didn't do it yet because I have a, a bent inner control or um, inner tie rod end that needs to be replaced. And I'm not sure yet if I'm going to be able to get that out without pulling the rack. If I pull the rack, I'm going to have to drain the fluid anyway. So I'm going to hold on that. But uh, the procedure that I use just to drain that is I don't worry about draining the whole thing. I just use like a turkey baster syringe to suck the fluid out of the reservoir and then just go ahead and fill it back up. And that, that seems to be good enough. But if I have to pull the rack, I'll have to drain the whole thing and then go through a bleeding process and whatnot. So that's it on the fluids. Hope that answers some of the questions that were out there. And uh, I'll see you next time.